Who are you? Who are you? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Well, welcome along to the vlog, ladies and gentlemen. That is a little bit of a strange start to the video, isn't it? So, on this day, early June, I forget the exact date because we're now on the 16th and I'm sat in the in my back garden with a pint of mango IPA editing some video. Uh, but yeah, back early June, we were uh, paid a visit. It was the day, actually, that... Um, Martin had taken Gemma and I for a meal to say thank you for the welding that I'd done for him earlier on in the year. Uh, so you can see us in the top right hand corner of the of the shot here. And this individual comes along to the pub and he looks relatively harmless on uh, first impressions. Maybe a little unsteady on his feet, almost like he'd had a drink somewhere else that evening. And because we were getting close to the end of the day, uh, it was probably not the best idea to let him in and save him another drink but there was still that 45 minutes to go before closing so we often get a few people come in and have a swift off in the last half an hour of our opening time so it's not unusual is my point anyway this chap comes in orders himself an half uh, Sam serves him, he sits down and everything seems unky dory for kind of the first half an hour uh, we continue having a chat up in the top corner and things get a little bit weird he kind of pulls his phone out and he's on loudspeaker on his phone and everyone can hear his conversation it's all a little bit kind of strange but we have a bit of a laugh about it anyway do not seem to be a problem I mean he do not look like he could punch his way out of a wet paper bag to be fair so alarm bells weren't ringing at this point Anyway, Gemma and I decide to call it a night and leave uh, Sam and Stuart to lock the place up, as usual. And uh, Stuart jumps in the van and he runs home some of the waiting staff that we've had on, some of the girls, uh, 16, 17 year olds. So if we can, we'll drop them off at home so they don't have to walk home at kind of 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. And then Stu will come back and, uh, you know, cash up and whatever else and put things to bed and in that period uh, I believe Sam's told the young chap that it's kind of last orders and it's time for him to move on you know anyway he sure does take his time and I think it's over half an hour a little bit of kind of back and forth with him he goes to the toilet at one point for 15 minutes that nobody knows what he did down there and then he comes back up and uh, he starts complaining to Sam that we've taken his money and we're kicking him out. So bear in mind he had two halves of what I can't recall. Uh, but he paid for them and he drank the beers. So transaction complete as far as I'm concerned. But he, he was obviously looking for trouble. So this kid was uh, yeah, not too happy about being kicked out. Well, we were closing up though, so it's not an hotel. It is what it is. Anyway, out on the street, uh, you can see him here in the bottom right hand corner, arguing the point with Sam, telling Sam that he doesn't want to leave because we pay he's paid his money and he believes that gives him rights to stay in the establishment for as long as he wants, it would appear. Anyway, he finally decides it's time for him to move on and off he goes and uh, after much deliberation he walks off only to come back again 15 20 minutes later and loiter at the entrance while the staff are in the back Sam and Stuart are in the back uh, cashing up and putting everything in the safe and whatever else and this guy's at the door looking somewhat an ominous character his intentions we don't know what they are at this point and then he starts tapping on the window and this causes Stuart to uh, do something about it so Stu goes around the front 
tells him in no uncertain terms to move on. You know, he's got two choices. He can go up into town, he can go down towards where the petrol station is, where, funnily enough, we had reports the next day that he'd been in there shoplifting. So when he, we believe when he left our place, he went there and he stole some confectionery and then came back chomping on a Kit Kat or whatever. Uh, but yeah, anyway, Stuart tells this kid to, you know, have it on his heels and bugger off. It's late, we've got neighbours, we don't need numbskulls making a racket outside our establishment. And, uh, well, this kid says to him, well, what are you going to do about it? Uh, sort of thing. And Stu says, look, nothing. Whatever. Just clear off. So you can see on the other camera shot here, uh, Stuart walks off in the other direction and ultimately goes through the archway and back round to the tradesman's entrance of the pub. Now this is where this kid makes his first mistake. He follows Stuart into the archway and then proceeds to try and attack him. So he goes for Stuart. That Kit Kat must have given him a sudden rush of sugar to the head or something. Anyway, Stuart being uh, the martial artist that he is, uh, <laughs> he's got a black belt in sweet and sour sauce. He decided he weren't having none of it, and you can pretty much see that this kid realised his mistake fairly swiftly, and I tailed it out of there as Stuart bested him. And then we cut across, obviously, to the clip that we played you at the start, and I'll play it here again for posterity. Is it? Fuck, fuck you. Who are you? Who are you? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? So after this point, the police had been called. They didn't seem all that interested. In fact, they never came out. We never got a crime number or anything like that. They, they weren't interested at all. Um, and then later on the evening, uh, a couple of the residents from upstairs, because there are some flats above us, nothing to do with the pub. Uh, nice, nice kid though. Came out and uh, had a chat with Stuart, and he said, "Whilst you've been away, this this chap's been back." So he'd obviously been back. Maybe fancied another go. I don't know. Uh, so Stuart pulled up in the van just to keep an eye on the place, you know, in case he decided to put a brick through the window or something stupid like that. Anyway, it started getting late and Stuart had business in the morning r relatively early on, so he had to get home and get some sleep, so he left. And uh, the young lad from upstairs kind of kept an eye on the place for us, which we're grateful for. Um, but yeah, he did inform me, which is why I caught it on the camera, that an hour or two later he came back for a third time, and you see him mosey on past here. Then he goes and sits on a bench, actually opposite the Idle Valley Tap, and then uh, vanishes to be seen nevermore. So we put the feelers out locally and we got a name and address for him. And that's where it stands with us at the moment. But I thought it'd be interesting, an interesting insight for you guys to see what uh, what things can kind of come out of the blue. Um, we run a relatively quiet establishment. We don't have bouncers on the door. You know, we, we sell food and real ale. We don't have idiots in, we don't play the football, all that kind of stuff. So this happens very, very rarely indeed. I've had one run in with a lad back in 2017, I think it was 2018, on the small brew shed, smashing glasses outside the pub. And uh, this is the only thing that's happened since then, really. But I thought I'd share it so you can see. Well, I, Firstly, I want everyone to see this little arsehole's face, so they can see who he is, the little piece of shit. And uh, secondly, just make sure that if you are running a small establishment like this, and you've got staff on, you know, think of their safety first. It's not worth, it's not worth having them get into any bother. You know, if somebody does break in, let them take the money. It's insured. It's replaceable. 
Um, but I'm also going to mention the fact that the f no no police presence whatsoever, and uh, not even a follow up from them for the next week or two. We're still waiting now, which isn't good enough, frankly, is it? So anyway, we'll end on a bit of a bum note there. I've got some better and more interesting videos to uh, get on YouTube, but I'm sure this is quite interesting to see the crook who ultimately, well, took a wrong turn towards Harrison's Brewery and got his head kicked in. Unlucky, my son. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that vlog, and uh, we'll see you for some more upbeat stuff on the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Cheers.